Hey kids, welcome to Lesson 6, User Input and Strings, Part 8. Update the text area with your Mad Libs outline. When figuring out how to progress with the program, it helps to break down the program into smaller steps and test your program incrementally. Rather than jumping straight to getting the user input and concatenating it with your Mad Libs outline, start first by just making sure that you can get the Mad Libs outline to appear in the text area when the next button is clicked on the screen. But wait, if you just use set text and pass the string of your Mad Libs outline, it'll look like the screen on the left where all the steps are smushed together. You can use one or more new line characters and this is simply just the slash in the end in your string to create a line break in your text. We have an example here. So what we need to do is we need to add this text to this area. So when we click next on our first screen, it should pop to this screen and have this text here. But we don't want it to mush all the way around what we want it to do is to be nice and spaced out like this. Hmm, that sounds pretty interesting. So how are we gonna get that to actually happen? Well, the first thing I need to do here is start my code. And this is going to be my text area. I need to create a variable I'm going to call later because ultimately, if we remember back to our last lessons, the Jessica is 15. What we were doing was creating strings and we were just really putting variables in there. I think the first thing I need to do is to create a variable and I'm going to make a global variable. And this is going to be whatever this is going to be outputted here. And I'm just going to call it my lib text. And that is going to be equal to this big giant line of text here. Now, in interest of just keeping time down a little on this, I have already written this out to a text document so I can just paste it into here. So let's just control V and take a look at what I did here. Oops, that was my old variable. We have a new one in here. So let's get rid of that one. So my variable lib text here is going to output to this whole thing. So learning to drive is a tricky process there. And this is going to be spelled out exactly like it is because it is in quotes. We have a string here or a, full, a few rules to follow. And then we see we have my slash n slash n. These are my new breaks or paragraph breaks or line breaks, whatever you want to put it. If you've done some web design, this would be your BRs, whichever, this is basically your enter key right there. So this is giving me a enter right there. Number one, keep two, and this is plural nouns. I assume this is a placeholder right now for where we want to go back. So you can see it up there. This is just going to say, this is where my plural noun is going to output. We're going to go on the steering wheel plus will at all times. We have another page break there. Number two, we're going to step on the, we have our first noun. And again, this is going to be exactly like it because we're all in quotation marks. We will in the future pull this out to be a variable, but for right now it is just a text. Same thing with four, just a little space over there. That looks pretty good. All this is here is this text, copy and pasted. All I did was I added these slash ends from earlier into my lines of code as line breaks. So that's all I did. Nothing special, no coding done next. It was just set to a variable lib text. Now that's not all I have to do. I also have to set this text here. So when the next button is clicked, I want that text to come up. Hmm. How am I going to do that? Well, I am going to just come down here and I am going to set my screen or set my text, this one right here. And the text ID I want is this box 
which is text area one. So text area, oop, I'm sorry, that is not the same one. Let's go ahead and change his name real quick. This should be text area one. Make sure our names line up. Go back here, we have text area one, so that's now right. And we want the text, we don't want this in quotations because we don't want exactly, we want lib text to output right there. Now this is not right yet. What we still have to do is include this into the function. Well, what function do we want to include it into? If I did it on the play screen here, that wouldn't really do it because when we hit play it again, that's not where we want the text output it. We really want it when it's the next screen. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually going to move this text down to here. So all I did was just flip flop, play screen, and my next screen. And to include this into the function, all I have to do is take my parentheses, curly Q, and semicolon, and put it down here. I'm gonna indent it just a little more so I know I have it. And just by doing that, it is now included in this larger function. So on the event the next button is clicked, this is going to happen. And it's gonna output my text area one, this lib text here. Let's see if I'm right. Let's go ahead and hit run, reset. We have to go back to our original screen here, play again, next. And you see as I hit next here, my text is outputted there. I still have to add my variables in, but at least the text is getting there, and that's really the important part. In addition to that, it looks exactly like the second screen, and that's how I want it to look. So far, I have my screens going back and forth, and when the next screen is outputted, the text that I want is just no variables yet. You can see my code is starting to get pretty complicated here. I'm really glad I was commenting this stuff out. I hope you are too as you're working along. And I think that's all we really needed to do. We got our second screen set, the text set, and we added some new line characters in there. Looks pretty good. I don't think code.org wants anything else. Let's see if they do. Nope. Good job, kids. I'll see you on the next lesson.